Good morning friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Medical Classes by Dr. Srinidhi Kumar Acharya. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and also please give your valuable comments. You can also visit my playlist. In the playlist I have provided all the topics in a systematic order so that it is quite convenient for the study. So today we will discuss a very important topic that is development of the placenta. Everybody knows about the placenta and maybe knowing about the formation of the develop uh, or development of the placenta to some extent. So today we will have the discussion step by step in detail so that you never get confused. Around the 20th day of the cycle or 6th day after fertilization, the blastocyst will get attached to the compact layer of the endometrium by means of selectins and also the sugar molecules and the endometrial endothelial cells will be eroded to some extent and the blastocyst will enter inside the endometrium. This we have seen. Endometrial cells undergo apoptosis induced by the blastocyst cell. Previously in one video also I have explained this. Once the implantation starts, the neighboring cells of the endometrial cells, they start the accumulation and there will be accumulation of the lipids and as well as glycogen at the site as a source of nutrition for the blastocyst and this is called as a decidual reaction okay implantation starts the neighboring cells of the endometrium now starts accumulating there and also there is accumulation of the lipids and as well as glycogen and this will serve as a nutritional source for the blastocyst once the blastocyst layer enter inside the dissolved mucus cells of the compact layer then the dissolved area will be get reformed and now the blastocyst is, cap blastocyst is captured inside the endometrium very safely. And this is called as complete implantation. The complete implantation will take place. Previously it is incomplete implantation. Once it enter inside the endometrium, captured inside, now there is no question of falling back. Okay, it is safely captured there and staying there. So this is called as complete implantation and which completes by the second week. <coughs> so on the end of the first week implantation is started and at the end of the second week implantation is completed. Now from eighth day onwards in the blastocyst now the outer layer is called as cytotrophoblast and the inner compact cells are called as embryoblast. The pole of the cytotrophoblast related with the embryoblast is called as embryonic pole while which is not related with the embryoblast is called as extra embryonic pole or non embryonic pole. Now the trophoblast which initially which is a single cell layer now the individual cells can be uh, previously it is a single cell layer with the individual cells that can be identified but now some of the new cells are formed and they move outwards and they lose their membrane and it makes a mass like structure which is interconnected with the clear which is uh, interconnected without any clear cut differentiation okay so now so few more extra cells are formed and that forms a layer outside and that layer is called as a sensitive sensitive trophoblast which is also called as a STB this happens around eighth day now around ninth day within the sensitive trophoblast the multiple cavities called as lacunas will be formed and this lacunas uh, the cavity is the space which is present inside this lacunae so that is called as lacunar space they become now interconnected these lacunas they become interconnected to form a big cavity and these connected cavities now will be connected with the spiral artery and the veins present in the endometrial middle layer middle layer is known for its vascularity from there the veins now start coming inside this particular cavity okay so now the maternal blood somehow now start coming into this particular cavity. Somewhere these cavities are connected with the arteries with a high pressure. These cavities are there, they are connected with the arteries. At some areas these cavities are connected with the arteries those who are having high pressure and somewhere they are connected with the arteries which are having less pressure. So because of this what happens now blood start coming into that particular cavity and also goes back because of the high and low pressure. So blood start coming and going out through this particular cavity. So this is the initial development of uteroplacental circulation. This happens in the 11th or 12th day of gestation. 
Now, the sensitive trophoblast now produces important hormone called as SCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone, which gives the good news to the corpus luteum that implantation because sensitive once the implantation takes place now sensitive trophoblast produces some hormones which is called as SCG which is a marker usually the common most marker of pregnancy SCG this gives a news to the corpus luteum that implantation has has been successfully taken place you don't disintegrate now your work is your responsibility is now more and you have to now keep on producing the progesterone because we need to maintain the pregnancy so now by getting this news what happens is carpus luteum is not get disintegrated into yellow body rather carpus luteum will now produce more and more progesterone to maintain the pregnancy usually we know that normal lifespan of this carpus luteum is 10 to 12 days but now it has to continue the function until the placenta function starts so heavy progesterone will make the further changes in the endometrial layer of the uterus and makes it more secretory, more glandular and vessels will more enlarge. So cells will also enlarge and it make, make it more and more functional. Uterine endometrium becomes now more and more functional. It is more bulky now. Now it is more secretory, more glandular, more vascular. The change which is occurring in the endometrium is called as decidual reaction or decidual change. Now, once this decidual changes start, now uterine endometrium is not called as uterine endometrium, rather now it is called as decidua. Now it is called as decidua. Now some of the cells of the sensitiotrophoblast cells will proliferate into this and produce some villi which are called as primary villi. Now the last layer, STB layer, so they it produce some connections, some uh, streaks, okay, some streaks towards the center and uh, uh, this is called as primary villi. Once the trilaminar layer undergoes the folding, a trunk-like structure is formed. By this time, there is also the formation of the trilaminar germ cells, ectoderm, endoderm, etc. will be formed and a tube-like or trunk-like structure is formed. Baby is basically developing inside the layers of the endometrium and not in the myometrium. Now this is very important. Baby is basically developing inside the layers of the endometrium and not in the myometrium. Myometrium is different, endometrium is different. Endometrium has about three parts, compact layer, spongy layer and basal layer. And then we will have the myometrium, isn't it? So now, meantime, the uterine endometrium is now divided into three parts. Decidua bacillus, endometrium of the uterus, which is present deep to the product of conception. Product of conception is present in the uppermost layer, isn't it? Compact layer. So deeper one, that is called as decidua bacillus. Okay. In future, this will be the major. This will form the major content of the placenta for the formation of the placenta. This decidua bacillus is a very very important. Decidua capsularis. Decidua capsularis is between the product of conception and the uterine cavity and it acts as a capsule which is over the embryo to the product of a conception. This is present in between. Okay, so this is present between the product of conception and between the uterine cavity, basal layer. Last one is decidua partialis, para, sorry, parietalis. So that is rest of the endometrium is called as decidua parietalis. The villi which is deeper to the deciduous will overgrow while rest of the villi which are present in the other part away from the decidua bacillaris will undergo degeneration. The villi which are actually the primary villi which are developed deeper to the deciduous now will further grow and the rest of the villi which are present in other part so they will undergo degeneration. The outer layer of the extra embryonic mesoderm part of the chorionic plate okay we have discussed in the previous classes the outer layer of the extra embryonic mesoderm which is also the part of the chorionic plate now will extend inside the villi which is a, a, like a finger like projection it is the extra embryonic mesoderm now project inside or extend inside the villi which is a finger like projection the chorion which is directed towards the villi looks like a multiple finger like projection and they are called as a chorionic frondosum they are called as chorionic frondosome. This is also called as secondary villi. This is also called as secondary villi. Rest of the chorionic plate 
is present as a chorionic plate but some portion of the chorionic uh, that uh, will lie so uh, chorion chore will extend inside or protrude inside and that is called as chorionic uh, uh, frondosome okay chorionic frondosome and this is also called as secondary villi these frondosome deciduous basalis will go into form the placenta now this frondosome chorionic frondosome and frondosome and as well as this particular deciduous basilis layer they play a major role in the formation of the placenta meantime baby is covered by the amniotic cavity we know that and which is also covered by the chorionic cavity now as the time passes the amniotic cavity extend and pushes the chorionic cavity and ultimately forms the amnion chorionic membrane so what happens as the time passes amniotic cavity extend because baby is growing now amniotic cavity is extend and it pushes the chorionic cavity further side and ultimately forms the amnion chorionic membrane in between the cavity which was existing cavity in between the cavity which is existing that will disappear now we will have amniotic membrane and out of that we will have a chorionic membrane that's all now when they rapidly stretch out the deciduous capsular is also start degenerating and it also disappears deciduous capsular is which is present in between these two isn't it as a protection capsule so that also going to disappear now it become very big and whole uterine cavity will disappears and deciduous capsular will be pushed towards the deciduous parietalis now what happens the amnion chorionic membrane come in direct contact with the deciduous parietalis and uterine cavity is completely covered by amniotic cavity and uterine cavity will totally disappear now there is no separate uterine cavity that is filled by this uh, amniotic cavity only because baby is also growing in the meantime the bulky membranes are also growing now the fetus is connected with the deciduous basilis now this give opportunity to have a connection of fetus with the basal layer of the uterus cavity uterine cavity okay so now the fetus is connected with the deciduous basilaris or basilis by means of umbilical cord which is made up of extra embryonic mesoderm there is umbilical cord developing from the extra embryonic mesoderm now it connects to the basalis layer now the intra embryonic mesoderm which is present inside the embryo will start developing the vessels inside the umbilical cords the extra embryonic mesoderm which is extended outwards through the cord also enter inside the villi and forms the vasculature inside the villi now the secondary villi is converted into tertiary villi and the vascular channels also develops in the chorionic plates outermost chorionic plate likewise the vascular channels developed interconnects each other and a vasculature connecting the embryo through the umbilical cord the chorio amniotic membrane and deciduous basilis that is chorionic villi will connect each other now first there is development of all the vasculature then they interconnect each other meantime the blood which is coming through the basalis layer basal layer through the lacunar system previously it is restricted there only now will flow in this vasculature because vasculature is ready now the lacunar system which is full of maternal blood will appear between the two villi two villi two primary or uh, tertiary villi meanwhile the cytotrophoblast will move towards the deciduous basilis and penetrate it and and under it it forms a shell like structure it uh, forms a shell like structure and this is called as deciduous plate this is called as deciduous plate so what do you mean by deciduous plate deciduous plate is equal to maternal contribution of the placenta and chorionic plate that is fetal contribution of the placenta okay so uh, deciduous plate means it is nothing but maternal contribution of placenta placenta ka jo maternal contribution hai, that is basal layer and all and the fetal contribution fetal contribution is from the chorionic plate so so this totally it is called as deciduous plate now the fetal blood flows inside the chorionic villi through the deciduous plate and on the deciduous side there will be maternal side from the deciduous side we will have maternal side maternal blood on the chorionic side now on the fetal side we have got chorionic villi cytotrophoblast layer extend further and forms the septa hence it is converted into cotyledons the cytotrophoblast which is gradually increasing inside 
now it further extends forms the septa it separate and this forms a different cotyledons the oxygenated blood from the mother's side will fall forcefully through the broken arteries into the cotyledons and get absorbed by the chorionic villi later this blood will be carried through the umbilical veins into the fetus which is running in the umbilical cord and get circulate in the fetal body the fetal blood which is carrying these waste products fetal blood which is carrying the waste products etc from the fetal body will be carried to the placenta through the umbilical artery now see artery carries impure blood vein carries the pure blood okay artery in the villi now we get exchanged to the maternal side and thereafter it is drained into the venous system of the mother as the time passes the chorionic villi which contains many membranes like cytotrophoblast connective tissue etc will disappear and the umbilical veins is directly related with the maternal blood so that diffusion of the blood will be very easier previously it is taking place through so many other tissues now as the time passes growth starts what happens umbilical veins are directly related with the maternal blood they only take the maternal blood as the fetus is growing very rapidly it requires more blood so this will helps for the so this direct connection with the umbilical vein this will help for the easy transport now in the next class we will look into some of the important functions of the placenta so far we have seen how the placenta is formed and this is very important you can make use of some of the figures to understand this i have only given the theoretical portion because explaining in the figure it is quite different different otherwise i have to draw the picture so therefore please refer any of the uh, picture of the placenta which is available okay diagram of the placenta available and then connect with this thank you very much we will meet in the next class with the functions of the placenta thank you very much